Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We're working on the Comedy of Errors and today we get to hear from Antiphilus of Syracuse. Remember, we have an Antiphilus of Syracuse and an Antiphilus of Ephesius who are identical twin brothers, but they don't know that they're both in the same city. Antiphilus of Syracuse is now in Ephesius to do a little bit of merchanting, but also kind of sort of to look for his brother because they were separated at as very young children in a shipwreck and he's wondering what happened to his brother. He doesn't know where he is, but he thought maybe he should look in Ephesians, even though Ephesians and Syracusians hate each other and have decided that if somebody from one of the cities is found in the other city, they will be put to death and all of their goods confiscated unless they have a thousand marks to pay sort of as bail. So Antipholus of Syracuse had given a thousand marks to his servant Dromeo of Syracuse, because remember there's also a Dromeo of Ephesius who went with Antiphilus of Ephesius during the shipwreck when they were all kids. So Antiphilus of Syracuse gave Dromeo of Syracuse a thousand marks to take back to the inn where they're staying to hold on to just in case he has to pay his own bail. And in the interim, he met Dromeo of Ephesius, but didn't know who that was. Dromeo of Ephesius was trying to find Antiphilus of Ephesius, but found Antiphilus of Syracuse and was like, you need to come home because your dinner's ready and your wife's freaking out. And Antiphilus of Syracuse was like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have a, a wife, all of this sort of thing. And then in the past couple days, we've gotten to check in with Adriana, who is the wife of Antiphilus of Ephesius. And she was freaking out because her husband wasn't coming home and she was thinking that this means that he must be cheating on her, his eye must be straying, all of that sort of thing. And also the idea that he owes her a necklace, he has promised her a necklace, gets introduced. That will become important later. But Dromeo of Ephesius went home to her and was like, your husband's gone crazy. He has no idea who you are and where we live and all this sort of thing. He's, he's lost his mind. So she sent Dromeo of Ephesius back out to get Antiphilus again and then did a little bit more complaining. And that was the act of act one, scene two, act one, sorry, act two, scene one. Today we are in act two, scene two, which Antiphilus of Syracuse kicks off by saying, the gold I gave to Dromeo is laid up, safe at the centaur, and the heedful slave is wandered forth in care to seek me out, by computation and mine host's report. I could not speak with Dromeo, since at first I sent him from the mart. See, here he comes. How now, sir? Is your merry humor altered? As you love strokes, so jest with me again. You know no centaur? You receive no gold? Your mistress sent to have me home to dinner. My house was at the Phoenix. Wast thou mad that thus so madly thou didst answer me? So what we learn from this little tidbit, it's not a very exciting monologue, but what we learn is that he had gone back to the inn where he was staying, which is called the Centaur, hence the gold being safe at the Centaur. And he found that his gold was there, as Dromeo of Syracuse was instructed to do, um, and he's like, that, you know, there's something here that doesn't quite add up. My Dromeo was weird. But then Dromeo of Syracuse comes in and Antiphilus of Syracuse starts giving him crap about the encounter that he actually had with Dromeo of Ephesius. He's like, you know, are you going to ask me all these questions that I don't know answers to anymore? Are you going to pretend that I have a wife and that I live here and all this sort of thing? And Obviously, Dromeo of Syracuse knows nothing about this because he wasn't there for that conversation. So he basically says, I have no idea what you're talking about, which Antiphilus is like, but you, we were just, this was like a half an hour ago. We had this conversation and Dromeo is like, I have no idea what you're talking about. So Antiphilus beats him like you do, I guess. And Dromeo obviously doesn't like getting beaten because who does? So there's back and forth between the two of them about this quote-unquote joke that Dromeo had played on Antiphilus and is he going to play it again and what's it, what's all that joking about and all sorts of stuff like that. There's there's a lot of wordplay and, and double entendre and stuff like that and all of their back and forth. It's kind of cute, quick, rapid-fire stuff, um, but it gets them back in the rhythm of these are this is the, the matched set of Antiphilus of Syracuse and Dromeo of Syracuse and they, they kind of get on the same page about a couple of things, aside from the fact that Dromeo has no recollection of 
a conversation that he wasn't in. And then, to make things even more interesting in this whole comedy of errors where we have mistaken identities and missing props and all that sort of thing, Adriana enters. She comes into the mart because she's now decided that she's going to look for her husband herself. And tomorrow we're going to get to hear from her when she runs into Antiphilus of Syracuse. She's married to Antiphilus of Ephesius. But she runs into Antiphilus and Dromeo of Syracuse. And we'll see what happens when they all meet tomorrow. I'll see you then for that. Mwah.